Hey, I'm Nell B. Welcome to my channel. Um, I know this has been a long awaited video, but I've been so busy, but I'm back. So let's get right into the video. Um, the last couple of weeks, let's be honest, I've just been down. And my disability usually doesn't get me down, but I think being in my mid 20s and wanting to do a lot of the things that a lot of 20 year olds do in terms of finding their self and you know finding their first job their first apartment and you know just rites of passage that regular able-bodied people take for granted is so much diff so much more difficult for me and i'm starting to see that a lot of people are still not accepting and not inclusive towards people with disabilities but now that i'm going through the stage where I'm going through the process of getting my driver's license and looking for jobs and doing things that able-bodied people do in stripes, I really get a new perspective of how prejudiced people are. And I was so focused on proving people wrong and, and breaking those barriers and doing those things that people say that Mm -hmm. I can't do and you know that's how I live but I'm at the stage now where I don't I don't care and I don't want to live like that why should I have to be the one to prove myself I've been doing that for 24 years and I've been doing it successfully and I think I've proven myself enough but it's just so discouraging because even when you get to that point where you feel like you've done enough there's always those people that say you need to do more or you can't do this and it's a hard concept to grasp because I always say this and sometimes people don't believe me but I, I always say I don't realize sometimes that I'm disabled and I don't mean this as ignorance like I'm in denial like I know I'm disabled I'm proud of it um, I walk with my head held high and I know I walk like a little cute penguin and that's my style and that's I wear it well like that penguin look that's my look but aside from that I don't realize I have a disability sometimes until somebody points it out because I just don't live my life in the state of someone that has a disability I I just I don't and I'm Chanel and I'm a mother and I want to just thank you guys for the support that I've been getting because without you guys these these hard times when I'm facing so much discrimination and especially as a mother with a disability people actually have the nerve to tell me that I because I'm disabled and because I'm limited I have no right to be a parent and my child is suffering because of my limitations. Um, they didn't say it in those words exactly, but they, they've alluded to it. Complete strangers. So, you know, just hearing that and then looking at your daughter, and I know those are all lies, but when it's continuous, eventually you start to crack. And you guys have been my solace. Uh, thank you for that, and I appreciate that. And I thank you because I, I know there are other parents with disabilities. I know there are other mothers with disabilities. I know there are grandparents with CP. And having that community where I can at least silence out the judgment for a little while, it makes doing the, the YouTube channel so worth it. Because, you know, I don't care, like, let's be real, like, I don't care what the naysayers say. I don't care if people want to say that I can't do this or can't do that because I just keep doing what I'm doing and it's been working. You know, people say I, I couldn't walk and I'm doing it. So, but when they attack my parenthood, I still have it. Um, been able to have a defense mechanism because that's, and I don't think I ever will, because that's, my daughter is the most important thing to me and that's a sensitive issue. 
So having this safe space to talk about these issues, I thank you guys for listening. And I'm really going to try to crack down that uh, parenting video for you guys by next week. Uh, today, next week. So if there's any first-time moms with CP or with any type of disability, really, just please let's start the conversation below. Um, I could have used the advice when I was... Um, a first-time mom three years ago I didn't have I didn't know anyone who parented with a disability I didn't know anything about adaptive equipment or things that would benefit with me parenting so you know if we can communicate and even now like I'm in the toddler stage and that stage is so rambunctious my daughter's always running around and I'm trying to find ways to keep up and keep her safe and if any of you guys have some tips that will be so helpful. Thanks. Terrible twos is like the worst. Compound it with a, having a disability. It's completely nerve wracking. Um, I eventually I'll do a video with um, with showing you my adaptive equipment that I use and also parenting tips with having a disability. They're pretty much the same, but. You know, I got a couple of tricks up my sleeve for you um, first-time parents with disabilities. So, look out for that video. I have a little story time for you guys. I've never really shared this with anyone, but here I go. I feel like now three videos in, I can start to get more personal with you guys. I'm the real Nell B, so I gotta keep it real. <laughs> Okay, I'm done being corny. As a child growing up, I remember going to school and I, the same kid, you know, we would ride the bus every day and he was, he was just looking back on it now, he was like a real inspiration to me because he was so sick, dealing with so much and he was always so pleasant and so happy. Then that goes to really show you, you really don't know what people are dealing with behind their smiles. And that's why even when people try to snap at me, I, you know, I don't snap back because you never know what somebody's dealing with. So it was always pleasant. One day, I didn't see him. And I just remember looking out the window of the bus and his dad ran out and like dropped to his knees and bawling and say um, he's gone he's gone and as a kid that was my first real experience with somebody close to me dying and I just I didn't I didn't know what was going on I thought it was a joke like I was only like in the fifth or fourth grade and looking back on it my response was that of shock and just sheer ignorance and I don't mean that in a negative way but I just I have never experienced death up to that point and I was so young that my first initial response was to laugh I'm like <laughs> and you know looking back on it I feel so guilty because I laughed at this grieving father but I think the reason why I know the reason why I did it is I was just so in shock and sometimes when we're so nervous that we don't know how to respond instead of doing the regular response that people expect of crying and being remorseful i was still in shock and i laughed because i was just in complete disbelief that's how detached i was and i remember the lady beside me, um the girl beside me saying that's not funny that's not funny don't laugh at somebody's death and i i i feel guilty and i still feel guilty because that's not the way I felt inside, but that's what portrayed on my outward emotion. And I just remember apologizing. And, and I remember grieving, and I remember crying, and I remember even still as a child in disbelief, what, waiting for him to come on the bus the next day. Like, I really thought, I don't know what I thought, and he never did. And I, I guess my, my reason for telling you that story is 
that kid was so pleasant. Like, I used to complain about every little thing. I used to complain about how my Air Force would hurt me and I hated wearing those shoes. And he was, he was going through pain every day and he was still able to smile. So I guess he's the reason why I kind of smile through everything because if you're not dead, it could be worse. Not to make an excuse, and I know that naturally people who are anxious or, you know, they in a state of shock and they don't know how to respond. Laughing as an unnatural response to an uh, unexpected situation is pretty common. Sometimes when we don't know how to react, we react in an awkward, outward way. But it was later when I, I really couldn't understand why I did this, like why I laughed, and knowing that it's still it's still very common. I just couldn't accept that because that was my good friend. Like I didn't, I didn't want that to be my response. So I literally googled it, and then I found out in doing my research that um, laughing uncontrollably sometimes is a direct result of brain injury but that's a pretty common side effect to brain injury and i've lived with brain injury all my life and i couldn't understand why i do this sometimes and now i have an answer i wish i could change it but to to know that this is something that affects people with brain injury such as myself like i feel more at peace and less like I'm a fish out of water I feel like somebody can relate to me so if any of you guys experience this little weird fact that I just found out recently please comment below because it would really help me know that I'm not alone and I want to hear you guys stories before I forget I also want to shout out my girl Geneva Renee she's such a beauty and she has CP and her channel is the real deal, and I don't shout out a lot of people. So if you're interested in hearing her CP journey, I'll leave the link to her YouTube channel below. She's been such a big support. Hey girl, and congrats on 100 subscribers. I don't know anyone who deserves it more than you. Keep doing what you do, girl, because it's working. All right, bye.